interesting. Of all of all the time of all the years I've been doing this, I've never been asked that question. <laughs> Power to live more with Joe Dodds. Welcome to the Power to Live More podcast, all about productivity, organization, well-being, energy, and resilience. I'm Jo Dodds and I started this show to enable interesting people to share their stories about how they use their power to live more and by that I mean to do the stuff that they want to do more than the stuff that they need to or should do. It's about creating a life for yourself where you have the energy, health and space to be happy and fulfilled, spending your time as you'd like, whether that be at work, home or somewhere else entirely. That's your choice. Hello. My name is Ellie Dodds and I am co-presenter and today Jo is interviewing Dr Grace Lee. Dr Grace got in touch with us through her podcast PR. Dr Grace is host of the Career Revisionists podcast and founder of Mastery Insights, a coaching and education company. She is on a mission to unleash the extraordinary in the world through insightful career development. Her proprietary approach integrates neuroscience and business development principles to help savvy professionals bring out their own greatness and advance their career. Dr. Grace has spoken internationally to work cultures in Asia and North America and published in over a dozen medical journals that feature her unique discoveries to the field of neuroscience. Back to the studio. Today I'm interviewing Dr. Grace Lee of Career Revisionist. Welcome. Should I say Dr. Grace or Dr. Lee or Grace or how would you like me to refer to you? (laughs) No problem. You can just call me Grace. Thank you for having me here. Really pleased to have you here. I'm just trying to think if I've had any other doctors on here. We, hmm, not sure. I probably wouldn't have made such a big deal about the thing, and you know, I'd have asked you before we came on if I'd been used to it. So maybe not. Maybe you're our first doctor. So con- congratulations and welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but, you. <laughs> so lovely to have you here. Um, tell us a bit about who you are, what you do, and where you do it. Right. I'm based in Vancouver, Canada. It's all the way across the pond, but I am location independent. So I I am home based and my clients come from all over the world. I have some from the UK, some as far as Singapore and Australia. So there really isn't a location for what I do. And Mm -hmm. I what I do is I, I run a coaching based business. So I'm, I, I guess most would say it's career coaching, but I don't like to use the term, you know, because when you think career coach, most people think, oh, you help people with their resume and cover letter, is it? Or you help people <laughs> with their interviews, is it? And uh, most of the time, it's not about that. You know, when you want to advance your career and when you think career, they also think, oh, it's corporate. But, you know, mm. a career is entrepreneurship as well. A career is business, business ownership as well. Those are careers. Because yes. Right. Because to, to me, what is a career? It's actually the greatest form of expression of who you are and the impact you want to have in this world. And so I help people who want to up level their career. I help them earn more, to be more, to love more, to have more. Right. And I do it with I take I help them with a system. I help them through through that to becoming more. And what I've what I've opened up recently is, you know, I understand being a woman myself and being an educated woman is that women have unique challenges in the marketplace. It doesn't matter if it's in corporate or business ownership. They have their own challenges that are uni- unique to being women and having other responsibilities outside of their work. And so mm. I've opened up a program where I help educated career driven women. Right. And so that's basically in a nutshell what I do. Lovely. And before we came on, you told me you went to university in Scotland. And you know what? I heard the Scottish twang when you said some of those answers. Oh, was <laughs> you that obviously right? didn't pick up. Oh, my gosh. Scotland was a long time ago. I think the, I think when I was there, it was 2004, 2005. That was a oh, such wow. long time ago. Yeah. And yeah. no, right near the beginning, you have to listen back. But in about the f- first two sentences of that answer, you definitely sounded like you'd lived in Scotland. So mm, there you go. You didn't know that. <laughs> no, I had no idea because I've lived and I've visited so many different cities. And uh, I'm just yeah. every time I go, I immerse myself in the local experience. So yeah. I really don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so talk us through a bit of how you've ended up doing what you do, because I quite often talk to my guests and say, you know, you're doing something that I don't imagine you imag- imagined you were going to do when you were growing up. You know, we grow up thinking we're going to be, I don't know, firefighters and nurses and policemen and teachers and things like that. Um, and a lot of us end up doing things that we probably 
didn't imagine all those years ago. Um, and quite often it's as a result of various things that have happened along the way. So why, and, and also you teach people to be really clear about why they do what they do. So why do you do what you do? Yes, absolutely. You know, obviously, Joe, never in a million years did I imagine I'd be where I am today. You know, being a career mentor, even being a mentor at all, speaking from stage all over the world, being interviewed by people, I never imagined I would be where I am today. And, you know, I, I didn't go through the usual, I want to be a police officer or a fireman as a child because it, it all happened as a child. You know, my life changed at that time. I lost my mother when I was nine. And it was this, that was the beginning of my being an orphan. So I was an orphan, you know, my, my father really wasn't in the picture and he didn't, he didn't provide and he didn't want to continue the relationship with me because he had remarried when my mom passed away and mm. he started a new family with that, with, he started a new family anyway. And he had a couple of uh, new, new daughters come in the picture and he didn't carry on the relationship with me. So mm. at the age of 10, I was orphan and just with absolutely no support. So I, it was like survival and it was scarcity survival i was completely on my own i was alone i was i was just hopeless feeling completely worthless as a human being and it was just the darkest years of my life and it was like this for four years until i was 14 and i serendipitously met an older couple and they adopted me it wasn't a formal adoption it was just them saying grace why don't you come and stay with us you need a place to stay you're welcome to stay with us and i followed them home Complete strangers, follow them home. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And took it because I was desperate. I was completely yeah. desperate. So I followed them home and they invited me into their house. And it was like this it was just beautiful, beautiful, but very humble wooden yellow house. You know, they led me through the stairs, a, a very narrow carpeted stairs and upstairs to the right. And there was this huge bedroom and it had like furniture from British furniture for the night from the 1960s, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and they just turned to me and they said grace welcome home you can stay here for as long as you like just like yeah. that yeah yeah and they gave me a second chance and it was then two years later when i was 16 that i realized i want to stop giving up on life i want to have a future i want to be independent but the only way i knew how was the way that we're all programmed to do society is programming us at such an early age the school systems are programming us, teachers, our authorities, and they tell us, if you want to get a good job, you got to go to school, get good grades, and then you get a safe and secure job. That's the pre-programming we all get. And that's mm. the only thing. So you see, I was, it had such a stronghold on me. So here I am, 16, and I thought the only way I have a chance at a future is if I go to school. But I had no way. Nobody was supporting me, and I had, it had to be resourceful because I didn't know how I was, how I was gonna afford the tuition from college. So yeah. it was like, you see, my whole life up until that point was do or die. It's either do or die. And usually when people are in that situation, they tend to succeed. So I, I applied myself, I got resourceful and I got all the scholarships I could possibly get to cover my tuition and my, mm -hmm. my, all of my degrees my bachelor's and my master's all the way to a PhD have been funded through scholarships and, and bursaries, stipends, things like that. And so it, that's how it began for me. And I, I still, I was the awkward child. I was the shy, insecure person that, you know, I was bullied in high school. I was the one that nobody wanted to be seen with. <laughs> and let alone for speaking from stage, I was not articulate. I didn't, I wasn't particularly talented at anything, but then it changed, you know, during my PhD was when I realized that there's this really huge gap in the education system, right? The system teaches you very well subject matter on what you want to study. They give you the historical knowledge. They give you the knowledge related to that subject, but they don't teach you how to take the knowledge, how to organize it, repackage it and deliver it into wisdom that the marketplace is going to pay you for. Right? So they don't teach yeah. you how to make money. They don't teach you how to convert your knowledge into money in the bank. Mm. And, I thought, and I thought this is really concerning because it's all what I call certificate optimized education, where the goal is to turn you through, you get your certificate, you graduate, and they say, congratulations, and then go and make something of your life. And then you're on your own. 
So there's no guarantee yeah. of fulfillment, right? They guarantee, okay, we'll make sure that we give you the curriculum and the, and the, and the knowledge and then nothing after that. And so I thought this is really concerning because here we are, PhD students, master students, highly skilled, highly educated. And we don't know how to answer really important questions like who am I and what's the purpose of my life? let alone how to navigate our career or how to how to navigate what we really want, not what we thought we wanted, not what people tell us we wanted, not what the education tells us what we should do, but what do we want? And why do we why have we why do we have what we have up until now? Why can't I figure this out? You know, like those questions like that. And so I started during my PhD, I started with teaching. Right. And this was some this was me just trying to navigate my own career, just trying to figure things out for myself. Just trying to figure out what do I want at the end of the day and how do I get it? I have no idea how to get it. And because the marketplace is competitive, it's constantly changing and it's more and more so as we move into the future. And so when I started to figure things out, I went back and I taught these concepts. I started to dig out what are the principles and I dig, I dug them out, I figured them out and I taught them. I, I held seminars and workshops in the university and I noticed very interesting astonishingly, that there was such a huge need for that, that type of education, right? Career development education that we don't get in school. And that's how I started to realize there's a need for it, a real mm -hmm. market, right? And, and it just evolved from there, doing what I do yeah. now. Oh, actually, sometimes this, this sort of educate for career thing is sort of, it's, it's a bit perpetuated by the fact that the people that are teaching you are people who had to do that to be the people that they are. As in, you know, teachers have to be in the education system, get the degrees, get the teaching qualification and then teach. So it's it's almost like that is the only route for them, although it isn't to be fair. I don't know how it is in other countries, but in the UK, we're so short of teachers that we're encouraging people in industry to, to get into teaching now. So it's a, you know, it's a different model. But I do wonder if that's sort of how it all started, really, that the people who are educating the, the, the young people about their careers are people who have a very mapped out career path, you know, anyway. Whereas, <laughs> as you say, there's so many jobs now, um, I suppose, or, and always have been, where you don't need that career path to, to, to um, or that education path to get the career at the end of it. Um, and people find that out, but that, that's not what the education system tells them, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. But whether or not you need formal education really depends on what your career goals are. Mm. Like really, truly what your values are and what you really want to be doing, right? It depends. Sometimes formal education is absolutely necessary. Like if you want a profession, like be a lawyer yes. or a physician or that, then that, then formal education, the degree is necessary. Mm. But most, most of the time it's not. Right? Especially exactly what I keep telling my daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not what parents are supposed to do, is it? <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's really, it's a really hard pill to swallow sometimes because we've been pre-programmed to believe that if you don't have that education, that you don't have the advantage. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the thing. And and you talk about where did, how did this, all this begin, right? I can go into a long, a long discussion about it, but it really began in the industrial age in the 1940s and 50s. And that's when formal education was first introduced. And yep. so it was introduced as, as an apprenticeship, really. But that model really hasn't changed. If you look at the classroom, that structure, it has not changed. The technology around it has, but the structure of how you learn and the measure of intelligence, that largely has not changed. And, and I argue that it has, it's been destroying us, the way we see people, the way that we measure intelligence and progress in life and success in life and set people up for tr traditional career paths. It really has been miseducating and misinforming a lot of people. Mm. So given you did all your education, got your degree, got your master's, got your PhD, at what stage did you sort of form that view? Because your view is quite out of line with your own history now, albeit I guess you're able to uh, make the argument from a position of somebody who's been through it all. But at what stage did you sort of see differently 
I started to see differently during my PhD already while I was teaching, when I was running those mm -hmm. seminars and workshops. But mind you, I didn't have the words to articulate it back then. Mm. Words are really important because if you don't have the word for something, it doesn't exist in this universe. It doesn't exist with the words. So words are very important. They also are important because it shapes our universe. Words shape your reality. Back then, I didn't have the words to articulate it, but it was an intuition. I felt something was missing. Mm. Mm. And as I, you know, as I developed myself more, I had the art, I had the vernacular for it. I was able yeah. to articulate it, the complexities, all the nuances, and now it exists. And I can, I can share it. I can teach it. I can mm. close that educational gap. So, so what's the alternative? So, education, as you say, if you're looking at a particular profession, is is a requirement. It isn't a requirement for lots of the things that we end up doing. Mm. But what, what, you know, what should people be doing? What should our young people be doing instead? Or right. as well as. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a hard one. Right? Is it instead or as well as, right? <laughs> I, I would say that, well, first and foremost is to have clarity. What are your career, career goals? Like, where do you, you want to be? You know, because mm -hmm. I always I always have this analogy and I use very often. It's kind of like planning a trip. I, well, in North America, driving trips are so common. We, we commonly drive, you know, miles and miles to the next province, to the next state. And that's common for us. Right. And so I always use the analogy because it works here and it might work. It probably works everywhere, too. But say you want to plan a trip to a place you've never been to and you want to use your GPS, your Google Maps. Right. The first thing you got to do is you got to know where your starting point is. And then the next thing is you got to know your, your destination. You enter those two points in just those two coordinates. And then what does Google Maps ask you? It asks you to choose your route. Do you want to avoid highways or freeways? Do you want the shortest time or the shortest distance? The same thing is true in your career. It doesn't matter if you want to go into corporate or start a business or, or go into enterprises. It doesn't matter. There's still a destination to be entered. And, and it's interesting. I, I say that you got to know your starting point. And that might seem obvious, but a lot of people don't. They don't know their starting point. And here's what I mean by that is that they don't have their 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 starting point that they, they that they think they're starting in is actually a fictional starting point. In other words, they're not brutally honest with themselves of what they're starting with. What is the actual reality? They're not owning the fact of their life right now. And it's common because we don't want to face it. Facing it is very painful. Being brutally honest is very painful. Like and and we love to say, well, it's not that bad. But not that bad is a conversation when you head down. It's not it's not the fact of where your life is at right now. It's not the actual starting point, mm. right? So that's what I mean. The clarity on both of, of both of those points. That's where mm. you got to start from. And your business is called Career Revisionist. So I'm guessing that mostly you're working with people in that situation where they've done their thing, whatever that is, and then they're for some reason deciding that it's not right for them or that there must be something better out there and 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 you take them through that process of decide or identifying where they are and where they want to be sort of thing is that is that what you do is that those people that you work with okay so actually it's interesting my my company name is mastery insights career revisionist is actually the name of my movement so i've created a global movement called career revisionist that's the global right. movement yeah. where I help where I help professionals to to master their professional destinies and gain what I call true vocational confidence. Right. And and what I do. Yes, you're right. I do work with individuals who need that clarity on where do I want to go? I don't know. I'm not happy where I'm at right now. I'm unfulfilled. Sometimes I, I don't know why. Right. And mm -hmm. I need to change. Something has to change right now. Something has to change yesterday even, but I don't know what I want. I don't know which direction. So yes, I do help individuals like that, right? But most of the time, it's individuals who have a clarity on, yes, I, I know where I'm at right now. I've done the work. I know where I'm at right now. I've owned the fact of my reality, right? And things are good, but they could be better. Right. I want them to be great. Right? I want them to be great. I want to be more, earn more, love more, have more. You know, I want more, right? So good to great, right? And there's that other, there's a third group as well where things are great. Things are, things are great in my career. But, you know, I had to sacrifice my relationships to get here. 
or you know I had to sacrifice my health to get here I, or I had to sacrifice something else to get here and they have it all together in one avenue of their life but in an, in other avenues they don't right so there's that group as well and great and great is great but you know there's an always another peak to be climbed right there's an uh, there's always another depth of greatness that you can go into and there's this feeling of there's this thing where we always ask ourselves you know what's the purpose of my life and I always say that there's two times that you ask that question. One is a time where you're in complete scarcity, poverty, and you don't, and you have, you come from a place of lack. Then you ask yourself, what's the purpose of my life? You know, who am I? And then there's the hustle and grind. You hustle and grind and you hustle and grind until you get to a place of abundance, of having more than enough. But when you get to that place, you think that those questions will be answered, but actually most often they're not. Now you're in a place of abundance. You're on the peak of the mountain. And interestingly enough, the second time you ask it is right then and there. Now what? What's the purpose of my life? And and that's there is there is that emptiness, that unfulfillment that's still not there, even though you're in a place of abundance. And so those that group, that group, I help that group as well to get to a place of beyond abundance where there is fulfillment, where you you can quote unquote you can have it all, the relationship, you know, the fulfillment. The purpose mm -hmm. exactly yeah. and does that come back to that purpose thing so you know people who are successful and seemingly having it all quite often it is about not really knowing what they want and therefore what looks like what looks like that they've achieved it isn't because they never knew what they wanted in the first place it's it's not they haven't it could I, be I don't know if that's a circular argument there <laughs> <laughs> well Joe, it could be, it could be some people, it could be because now they're in this place of abundance where they thought they wanted it and they realized, you know, I never wanted this all along. And in that case, it becomes an existential crisis, right? But mm -hmm. sometimes it's not the case. Sometimes they're exactly where they, they wanted to be. They designed it. They had the success. They know what to, they know what it feels like to be successful and to be winning in it. And here they are on the peak of that mountain having it all you know feeling like they should have it all and people look at their lives and they tell them oh my gosh you you're you're so lucky to be where you're at and yet they still have this emptiness mm. it doesn't presuppose that they figured it all out and they it's because they didn't know what they wanted sometimes that is the case but not always yeah so how do you work with your clients what what do, do your days look like and you've already said your business name and your movement are sort of two sort of aspects so i guess like most of us you've, you've got a number of things going on how do you how do you how do you do that <laughs> in, in two <laughs> no, no. fair enough it's a fair question so you you're asking me what are your days like you know every day is different mm. for me actually very different for mm. me you know uh, but in terms of how i work with my clients right it's um there's there's a couple there's a few aspects, you know, one of the aspects of it, there's the teaching component, right? Because there's a lot of concept, a lot of principles that I teach, right? And I teach it through various platforms that I own and that I've built. And when plant clients come on, they have access to those platforms and it's like lifetime access to those platforms. So I give them the tools, the knowledge, and they have access to those, the codes for living, you know, the principles for success. The science of it all, right? Because I've I've boiled it down to a science, given my background in neuroscience and human mm -hmm. behavior, right? And so understanding all of that, I give them the knowledge, and this is knowledge that they don't teach you in school, so they have access to that. So that's the one component of it is the teaching, and then there's the mentorship component, and mentorship is where is so important, because the definition of a mentor is someone who gets you to do the things that you might not want to do, in order to become the person you say you want to become. Right. And so as a mentor, I, I, I do, it's like done with you, right? Done with yeah. you where yes, on some occasions I take them by the hand and I carry them through, but on the other, I'm challenging them. I'm pushing them at all along, all along, all along the way. I believe in them. And the hardest thing that I have being a mentor is I believe in them, but I can't make them believe in themselves. I can't make them have that faith to take that next step. That's the challenge, the biggest challenge I have as a mentor, right? So that's the what, another component of it. And the mm -hmm. third component is really having that accountability when they implement, right? So I can teach and they they learn the, the knowledge and the tools and the science of it. 
I give them the, the code, right? And then I can mentor them. But then a lot of times there's that motivation, there's accountability, which is the multiplier of success, right? So the, with those three combined, that's how I work with my clients. And what does that then make those days look like? As you said, it, all days are different. Um, is you know, are you working one to one, you know, in real life, <laughs> or you know, uh, you said you're your location dependent. So I'm assuming a lot of it's it's done online. How how does that work? Yes, absolutely, everything is done online. Yeah, all of it. Okay, cool. Yes. Yeah, but they, they they can communicate. They have access to me just like this. It'll sound just like this. You and I talking right now. It mm -hmm. sounds just like this with the very clear sound quality. You know, it could we could have the video on too if if there was a preference for that, right? But they have access to me. It's like yeah. it's like kind of like having me in my, their back pocket, a mentor in their <laughs> back pocket. Yeah, and 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 that's really powerful. You know, it's really powerful because all the long especially if you're an entrepreneur, a business owner, and and you had to bootstrap this business, right? And and you're and you've really hustled and grinded from a place of lack to that place of abundance. You know, a lot of times entrepreneurs are all alone in it. And they don't mm -hmm. have that, right? And and they just doing, they're so busy doing the thing that they didn't slow down enough to know what is the thing that I'm actually doing. Right, the busyness in their work catches up to them, and they don't slow down enough to listen, really listen to, well, what is it that I'm really working towards? What is it that I really want? Because mm. there's so many things that go into building a business. So, the whole working location dependent and working online is that something you've done sort of throughout, or is it a transition? No, it was I didn't do it throughout. When I started uh, teaching the seminars and workshop, it was actually in my university. Right. So I, I had to do the whole traditional sending out flyers to fill the room, advertising across campus, university campus, and then students will show up. And I started attracting students from universities all across. So I'm in greater Vancouver and there's like Di different like districts of Vancouver, different um, sort of like municipalities. I started attracting students from different universities and colleges across my province. They started coming to these things because mm -hmm. of word of mouth. And that's why I identified, wow, there's such a need for this. Yeah. So yeah. I started actually in the classroom, <laughs> in person, in the classroom. And so my influence, my impact at the time was very limited by geographic location. Mm, mm. Right. And so that's when I realized, you know, I could I need to impact more people. There's there's a global need for this because the school system is everywhere. And then that's how it wasn't a transition. It was basically a leap forward online. <laughs> <laughs> and what uh, what tools and apps did you start to use? What what do you use to keep yourself location independent? And what? has that changed? <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I don't understand the question. So to, what tools and apps do you use in order to to deliver what you do, um, you know, online rather than in person? Oh, tools and apps. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting. Of all of all the time, of all the years I've been doing this, I've never been asked that question. <laughs> I love it. It's very technical, right? Wow. There's so many. So my I have so many tools and apps, but I think my favorite ones is Oh, my favorite ones are for communication. I like Zoom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, it seems to so, sort have of taken over the world, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So my favorite one for communication is Zoom and mm -hmm. Telegram. Yeah, those are okay. my favorite ones for communication. Yeah. Um, ones for in terms of platforms, of I um platforms for teaching right uh, zoom is another one i do use zoom for teaching and then yeah. there is the there is uh, like for the sites and all that for platforms for the university i did start using teachable in the beginning yes yeah and then uh, i trans and then i transferred everything over to click funnels right yeah yeah okay. so there's that to keep myself organized yeah i i love to use um i use trello a lot mhm mm Right. And then there's Google mm -hmm. Calendar. That's extremely important. Um, and then and then there is also OneNote, Microsoft OneNote yes. to keep myself yeah. organized. 
right and so google calendar has got to be the most recommended app and probably closely followed by zoom <laughs> <laughs> it really is isn't it and i can see why yes yeah absolutely and what about uh learning and improvement for yourself you talked about obviously helping other people and mentoring other people and teaching other people how do you keep yourself um moving forward and you know you've you spent quite a lot of time studying is it something that you still do or have you started doing it differently because you did so much of it in a sort of more traditional way mm -hmm. joe i'm a student of life i'm <laughs> always a student and yeah, I mean, that's the humility aspect of it, which is really important. But also with that mindset of being a student, it means that I have insatiable appetite for learning and knowledge. Yes, for, for nine years, right, in, in three degrees in university, I was learning the traditional way in the classroom, taking exams and, and doing tests, right? But beyond that, after that, I'm still learning. It's called self-education. And I believe that self-education is going to be the new norm, right? It's going to quickly, very soon become the new norm and not no longer formal education. And that is what I, what I do now is self-education. And mm -hmm. what, what that means is that I'm constantly investing in my education, right? I invested in it during three degrees of university and I continue to invest in my education. And that could mean, that could mean investing in a mentor. A mentor who has the success that I want in business or in their career. It means investing in people who are ultra affluent, ultra successful, financially amazing, multimillionaires. I've invested in those individuals to become my mentors and learn from them. It means that I've invested in business masterminds with very high level individuals, successful entrepreneurs who have millions of influence across the world. It also means that I read books on a daily basis. You know, my goal is to read one book every single week or two books every single week, something like that. Uh, it means also that, you know, I, I, I invest in courses, you know, education, everything mm -hmm. that I can get my hands on, just an mm -hmm. insatiable appetite to learn. So it's interesting, I guess, when we talked about the, um, the sort of um, career ladder education thing um it's not that it's not the education that's the issue it's the the structure i wouldn't say that it's that simple of an answer and again i can talk at great lengths about this but in a nutshell the structure is a problem in that there is an underlying assumption that that is the measure of intelligence and that mm -hmm. you're only smart if you can get the A grade or get the A plus, right? And that is the, why the, mis, the misinformation comes in because yeah. there's no other way that the education system measures how you do besides your transcript and your grades. And so that becomes this misinformation of, well, well then I'm not smart if I can't learn that way. And it's yeah. very dangerous. And, and that's what I mean, that was, that's what comes out of the structure. And that is, that's the thing though, that structure does not work for everyone. No. Doesn't work for everyone, and so that's that's the problem of the structure. The structure is not holding is is not what's holding people back from finding their purpose and 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 their fulfillment, and that it's not the structural issue, right? But what's embedded in the education system is that belief that we must pursue job security, right? And that yeah. and that traditional career paths are the way to go. That's what's yeah. embedded in that formal education system. And I think that's where the miseducation and misinformation come. Mm -hmm. So last couple of questions. Firstly, what about those days when they go, when things go a bit horribly wrong? So the, the not so good days, how do you deal with those? I understand that those are the features of the journey. So there is not days that go horribly wrong. There's no such a thing as a day that goes horribly mm -hmm. wrong right the, the ups and downs are a feature of the journey right and so when it when it is when it, when it was when it is those things that that don't go as planned or if there are curves that come my way or unexpected events that come my way i always take a step back look at the big picture and i ask okay what is it trying what is the universe trying to teach me what is the hidden lesson here that i need to learn and i could i can be grateful for it mm. Yeah, and that's, I like that's that. Exactly yeah. It. yeah. Mm 
And what about those days where you get to live more and that's to do the stuff that you really want to do and less of the things that you feel you should do or you have to do? What do those days look like for you? It looks like every day. <laughs> <laughs> that's the right answer. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like every day. It looks like every day. And and really, like you described it, that's exactly it. It's um, doing everything is a want to and nothing is a have to. Mm, mm, yeah, exactly. Lovely. Thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed speaking to you. Tell people how they can find out more about you and get in contact. Yeah, well, the best way to contact me is to connect or follow me on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is mm-hmm. Dr. Grace Lee. Just Google Dr. Grace Lee Vancouver, and I'm always the the top search for that one. And also my website is named after my movement, careerrevisionist.com. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciated the invitation. Great to be chatting with you. All this information is available in the show notes. If you go to powertolivemore.com forward slash 144, then you'll find them there. And this week, I just want to revisit the topic of living more that we talked about last week. If you were listening, you may remember that I talked about going to visit my cousin in Spain, where she is uh, stewarding a campsite for the Camping and Caravanning Club. And I was just reflecting on how there are a, a load of people camping there with her who have shaped their lives to do what they want to do and if you remember again I said you know not everyone wants to live in a caravan (laughs) or a motorhome Uh, but you know these people have determined what they really want to do in their in some cases retirement in some cases not retirement they've actually got businesses and they're choosing to go over there and run their businesses in a certain way so that they can be in Spain over the winter Uh, and it was just last week I was reflecting on how they're getting to live more they're getting to do more of the things they want to do and less of the things that they don't want to do or less of the stuff that they don't want to do and I coincidentally listened to a podcast this week called The Diary of a CEO by Stephen Bartlett and it's it's one that I've listened to for quite a while now really good and he's a, a entrepreneur in his 20s he's I think about 28 something like that and he's had quite an interesting life he really has gone a bit sort of from rags to riches and he's now chief executive of a PLC and uh, he every week or not every week when he does his podcast he basically often is recording it in the middle of the night and he's just made notes in his diary and then he just sort of comes on to the the podcast and shares his thoughts and his strap line is something like Um, I hope no one's listening, but if you are, don't tell anybody what I've just said type scenario, (laughs) which is quite interesting. Uh, But this week, he was talking about not wasting your life preparing for your future. And he said, you know, he felt that he spent a lot of his life preparing for something that's going to happen in the future, for happiness, for being contented, for having achieved the things that he wants to achieve. And having now uh, ended up in with his company, um, going through the process to become a PLC, he sort of was saying, well, you know, I'm here, I'm where I said I wanted to be five years ago or however long ago. And he said, yeah, I'm still preparing for something else in the future. He said, I don't don't even know what that thing is. And he was reflecting that we spend so much of our time doing things now for this future that actually once we even get to the future, it doesn't stop. We don't say, oh, no, I've, I've achieved it now. I'm not going to carry on trying to improve or do these things um, because I don't need to anymore. We, we still keep doing it. So he, his reflection on that was, well, you know, what, what should you be doing now rather than constantly thinking about preparing for the future? How can you be in the moment and enjoy the moment uh, and appreciate what you've got now? And it sort of fits with the message that I share a lot, which is that we don't know what's in the future. We don't even know if we've got a future. You know, it's it's something that really hit home to me years ago, six years ago, when my mum died, you know, at very short notice. Um, and my late father-in-law was diagnosed with cancer. Obviously, he's no longer with us either. And I wasn't very well because I've been working too hard, all that sort of stuff. And I realised that actually putting everything else on hold while you do whatever it might be so in my case it was working a lot my father-in-law had done the same he'd put off retiring and then you know not long after he retired he was diagnosed and you know he had three years of retirement and he was ill during that whole time you know if we if we put off these things until this future date and then this future date doesn't come for whatever reason you know all that preparing we've done and all that sort of not living while we've been 
waiting for that to happen is is such a waste and so again just following on from last week's message you know what are you doing now that you can enjoy now uh, rather than constantly be thinking about you know the future when you'll have got all the things that you think you want or whatever and you know stop and look around you as things happen you know this week we've had a really busy week of social activities and I really like being at home on my own doing non-social things but actually when I am in those moments with people even though it was busy and I felt like I'd probably packed a bit too much in this week I did sort of look around and see what was going on you know we went to a quiz on at the weekend then we went to a a panto with uh, family uh, in Ipswich it's a rock and roll panto so really funny really good in terms of music and and so on um you know, we had to dash back so Ellie could go to a singing lesson. We had a lovely dinner in the evening. Um, it was a really busy weekend, but I did at many occasions through that weekend stop and actually look around me, sort of appreciate what everyone, how everyone was enjoying the um, the moment. You know, I was in the panto actually thinking, wow, this is great. This is the third time we've been to this. Uh, really enjoying it. Um, you know, remember what this feels like because, you know, this is a good time, a good place to be. Uh, today sort of thing and you know I think that is something that we don't always do but actually when you do it it really helps you to appreciate it's a bit like the gratitude piece that we talk about you know if you think all the time all the time about the things that you're grateful for you actually start to appreciate them more and actually realize that you're you know a lot more where you wanted to be or where you want to be than you think you are sometimes if you see what I mean (laughs) so yeah just a quick message on that and as I say um, the Diary of a CEO is a really good podcast uh in terms of inspiration and just really interesting stuff Uh, if you go to powertolivemore.com forward slash stop preparing then that will take you into the bit in this week's show that Stephen was talking about the bit about not preparing um, or what are you preparing for and do you need to keep doing that um but also i'd thoroughly recommend subscribing to the podcast so it's powertolivemore.com forward slash stop preparing and also just as a a little tip of, of a tool if you have a wordpress website there's a plugin called Pretty Links that you can use to enable you to create links that are easy for people to remember very easily. So this is a, a prime example that I wanted to send you to a specific place on a podcast. And the URL for that, as you can imagine, is quite complicated. But I've actually set it up so that you can go to powerslivemore.com forward slash stop preparing. And that will automatically redirect you to that spot in the podcast that I've talked about. And I did that all, all of that through my WordPress website by just entering a couple of Uh, bits of data within the Pretty Links plugin. So I'd absolutely recommend that if you want to easily set up redirect links for your audience, your customers, your um, contacts to be able to send them to to places that you recommend. So that's two things today. Don't waste your life preparing for your future. I'm not saying don't prepare for your future. That's important too. But, you know, think about being in the moment and enjoying the moment as much as thinking about the future. And secondly, a plugin for your WordPress site called Pretty Links, where you can easily set up redirects for people so that you don't have to remember complicated URLs. And just a reminder that I share this sort of information as well as provide support and accountability for my members in my membership site. If it's something that would interest you, if you're a home-based coach or consultant, then you can go to powertolivemore.com forward slash get calm to find out more about it or just drop me an email joe at powertolivemore.com and we can have a chat to see if I can help you. And again, the show notes for this week's show are at powertolivemore.com forward slash 144. And we look forward to speaking to you next week. Use your power to live more.